Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. Welcome, Bianca. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I've got my mask here today, my black one. I feel like it's a bit cooler wearing a black mask. I don't know. Yeah, my one's blue. I like blue. You got so. the, you got the uh, surgical yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, looking forward to the service today? Yes, um, Pastor Carl will be um, talking today, so everyone get your tissues. I've got my tissues. Yeah, everyone's got pocket, their tissues, so their boxes of tissues. Everyone everyone's going to need your box of tissues today. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm definitely looking forward to Pastor Carl's message. Yeah. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah, same here. Uh, should we pray to start the service? Uh, yes. Do you want to pray or should I pray? Oh, no, no, you. No, I, I, <laughs> no, you no, I think you should. It'd be great. No, I'm a bit shy. No, no. Pastor Joel, <laughs> All right, you should. Okay, okay. All right, thank you, Jesus, uh, for this day, God. Thank you. The yes. sun is shining today, God. Yes. Thank you that we can be here here together in your uh, in your space here uh, to lift up your name and worship your, your name, Jesus. Um, I'm praying for everyone who's watching at home as well, God, that today would be a blessed day, uh, that the service today would be something that they can uh, help them and help them grow. So that's yes. uh, for all the people online as well as that are here. And so in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's hand it over to the music team. Over to you guys.
church, I want you to sing, so come move. So come
Oh, uh, hi. Sorry. Um, hi, church. Um, I'll be doing the offering today. Um, I was asking God, what, um, what do you want me to do? And, no, what do you want me to talk about? And it kept on showing me this scripture. Luke 16, 10. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large things large ones but if you are dishonest in little things you won't be honest in greater responsibility when I started attending church pastor Anna asked if I would like to manage church cafe I said yes I love serving God and church cafe was something I can give back to God it may seem church cafe is something small but God knows my future and he was preparing something big for me he blessed me and my best friend Viv a hair and beauty salon I give, um, I, I give you a small testimony. A few weeks ago, God blew me away. He always blows me away. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, but one day, God provided an amount that we will make in a week. Hearing other people's testimony always makes me think if God can do that for me, uh, if God can do that for them, imagine what He can do for me. So I encourage you today to give back to God as He always provides all your needs. So let's pray. Okay, but guys, um, I might get nervous when I pray, so I I might stumble on my words, so just bear with me, okay? Okay, um, thank you, Father God, um, for your countless blessings and favours blessed upon us. Sorry, I'm a crier, just like Carl. But um, thank you, Father God, for your countless blessings and favours placed upon us. Um, thank you for always providing for us. Um, God, if you can provide for me, I know you can provide for everyone. So thank you, Father God, for everything. And amen. Uh, and also, um, on the screen, there should be like directions how you can like give back to God. So um, it's on the screen. So thank you, everyone.
praise this morning, Jesus. Honour and glory, power, majesty, all to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, right today and this morning, let's take this opportunity just to still and to quiet our hearts before the Lord. Open our ears, open our hearts, open our minds. God's here with us. been my prayer really from the start of this year but I'm still praying it every day even this morning that the presence of God would be here with us at the end of the day that's what matters more than anything else we 
We've got to switch our minds. We've got to switch our hearts. We've got to switch our ears to hear His voice. Because, you know, there's a lot going on in the world and it gets a bit confusing and our minds get a little bit hectic. And so this moment, this weekly moment is a chance for us to go almost take a sigh, a breath of release and and focus our heart and our attention on God. Because He really wants, I don't know, He wants us to give Him... Give him his our attention. So right now, I just want I just want us to spend just a moment in prayer, just a moment in the stillness of the room, the stillness of your home if you're online, the stillness of your heart. Just open that dialogue with God. Open the. What are you talking to God about right now? Just use this moment, just a couple of moments, to pour your heart out to God to listen to His voice. Jesus, today. We worship you. And, you know, we're a gathered people, God, listening for your voice. We've all got things going on in our life, Jesus. But right now we want to fix our heart on you. Fix our attention on you, Jesus. We welcome you into our hearts. We welcome you into this room. Jesus, right now, I want to be praying. I'm praying right now for the people in Melbourne still struggling. God, I'm I'm taken aback by the number of people that have really been have died from this um, virus. But I'm really I'm really concerned for their families, God. So I'm praying that somehow you would bring a peace into the families of those people, God. Somehow that you'd bring a sense of I don't know. It's okay. Some some sense that you are speaking to them in these situations, God. You know, brothers, sisters, children, grandchildren, we're praying, God, that somehow you, I don't know, bring a bring a believer across their path, God, and give them a sense of hope from the hope that comes from within us that flow out into them. Jesus. You know, I'm praying right now for people that are struggling to figure out what they're going to do for work, you know, as JobKeeper is winding up for some people. I'm, I'm praying, Jesus, that somehow, I don't know how, God, but somehow that you would find a way for those people to find something that they can do, something that they can contribute to the world and, and also really um, make ends meet, pay their bills and so on. You know, I, I want to pray especially, God, there's a little group of people uh, in this country who are from overseas, they're not permanent residents, they're here on work visas, but they've lost work and they've got nowhere to go and they, they can't access anything. So I'm praying, Jesus, that you'd help these people find the help they need. Maybe if it's with us, God, bring them to us and we can help them. Uh, maybe it's to other churches and maybe they can help them, but God, I'm praying for them in particular. Uh, for all of the workplaces here that are represented, God, all the people that are business owners or just uh, working for other people in this room, God, I'm praying that you prosper our business even amidst all of this sort of ups and downs and turmoil of the world, God, that you bring a prosper- prosperity to the businesses that are represented in this room as a shining light and as salt to the earth. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said... 
Amen and amen. Sorry, I think it's worthwhile stopping for a moment and just praying and not being in a hurry. I just think it's really worth our while, especially on a Sunday when we're gathered together to, to, to just stop and to hear the word. Just, I don't know, just to talk to God. I think it's really worth your time. <laughs> it's worth, definitely worth my time, I'll say that much. Well, uh, today we have the, uh, the honour, the privilege, the, uh, the, uh, the, the whatever it is that makes me really excited um, to have Pastor Carl come and speak a message today. So let's give Carl a great big hand. Uh, it's great to see so much of, so many of Carl's family along. So great to see you coming along to hear Papa, Papa Carl limping your way up, mate. <laughs> You look. I'd say, I'd, I'd say you're looking good. You're looking good from here up, but I, from here down, you're looking. Little, little, yeah, yeah. But um, but you know, do you want to? Yeah, you, God is good. I'm amazed by you, actually. You're a bit of a bit of a hero of mine, Carl. Well, I mean, I don't know. You've, you've got a smile on your face, and yet you can barely walk, and you're up these stairs, and you say, "No, I still want to preach." And I'm like, "Okay." So you're an inspiration. So I just thought, you know. I just thought, you're probably going to cry anyway, so I thought I'd just get you there to, to begin. <laughs> All right. Let's hear from Pastor Carl. Good on you, mate. Thank you, Jesus. We on? We good? <laughs> Sorry, show it. <laughs> okay. <coughs> it's not on? Well, I'm loud enough, I guess. Thank you, Lord. Oh, look at that. We have liftoff. Showing. Sorry, mate. Um, so, um, to continue on for um, our series, Made on a Mountain. And um, I've been asked to talk about prayer and fasting. Isn't that so fitting, you know, when, when we would climb our mountains and... <clears throat> Before I start on my my crying sermon, <laughs> I just wanted to um to get you guys to, to to understand how important prayer is. You know, in the Bible, it it actually I don't think there's a part of the Bible where there's there isn't a, a place where prayer and fasting has been so important. So I just wanted to uh, bring some people because. If I did have to talk about all the people in the Bible, we'll be here till next week. So I just want to talk about Moses first. In um, Exodus thirty-four twenty-eight, Moses was with God for forty days and forty nights, without eating bread or drinking water, where he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant. Now that's something very, you know, profound for someone to be up there with with God, and not eat and drink for 40 days. I mean, I couldn't last drinking, you know, without eating and drinking for a day. Yet here we have Moses, who has been with God, and he is, he, he actually fasts during the time that, you know, the, the, the commandments were, were drawn up. I believe that you know the story about Esther, Queen Esther. Queen Esther was married to a, a very... How could you say it? A very mean king. You know, th that king, you could not go to his throne and just start talking because he'll put you to death. So you'd have to stand there until he actually allows you to speak. So when Esther had word that 
someone wanted to kill all the Jews, she asked all the Jews to pray and fast. Now, the story is a bit long, but throughout that prayer, God actually came through and saved the Jews. So you can see that everything that we do and we pray, there's something profound that, that happens. If we have a look at David, David, King David, is probably the greatest hero for me. A king that, you know, he prayed and he worshipped. That was him. He, he was all about worship. And throughout his journey of being a great king, you know, God said that David is a person of his own heart. And truly enough, he wrote, you know, most of the Psalms. And, and that's how I understand that prayer in our lives is very important. If we go to the New Testament, one of the persons like Jesus, I mean, what can you say about Jesus? He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and he was tempted at the same time. Now, for you people that fast, if you fast and someone tempts you with something, you actually get upset. But Jesus was tempted after 40 days and, you know, without eating. So you can understand how his, his, um, his, his prayer life, I mean, it just blows my mind that Jesus will actually pray to his father. Where, did he really have to? But that's Jesus. He was obedient to his father. And that was showing us that we do need prayer. The other person in the New Testament we'll talk about is um, Saul. Um, sorry, Paul. Paul, who loved to kill the Jews. He, was a, he had a passion of killing Jews. Yet, he was turned around. And the thing that blew me away about Paul is when he was in jail with Silas. You know, they were whipped, they were beaten. And yet he had the strength to worship and praise God. So I believe throughout the, the series of, of Made on a Mountain, it's very important for us to, to stay in tune with God through our prayer life. And I believe prayer life is, is probably one of the most important things that a Christian can have as you climb that mountain. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm climbing a mountain higher than Everest. But you know what? It's, it's, it's what Jesus had done that makes me keep doing what I need to do. You know, this morning, yesterday, I actually was ready to, to come to church. I was feeling well. And, and then 3 o'clock this morning, I got the massive, the biggest attack. And, and I thought, no, I've got to come to church. I need to preach. So I said a quick prayer to God, and I said, Lord, I need to come to church. I'm in pain, and I'm actually, actually in pain at the moment. <laughs> I'm actually in pain at the moment, but my pain is nothing compared to what God did. And, and my pain is nothing to compare to what I need to say or what God has done through prayer and fasting. You know, these last two years, I think, have been one of the most times that I've prayed. Now, um, I think about a month ago, I had a really bad attack on my knees. And I can't explain the pain. It's like, it's like someone sawing into your bones nonstop. And these are both knees. And at the same time, I have sciatica pain. So I, that went on for like five days. I couldn't sleep. So I would sleep for 20 minutes during the day, and then pain. So what got, and this is what got me through everything. I started praying for people. I'm not crying, I'm just, so just itchy a bit. <laughs> I found that regardless of the pain that I'm going through, when I pray for other people, it takes my mind off the pain. For a little second, but the pain is still there. And, and I find that it actually, though, though my body is, is, is hurting, I feel that my spirit is strong. So when I am weak, he is strong. Through, through, through my life, I've, I've, I've no, I've, I believe that prayer has play, played a very important part. 
from, you know, from the stories that Anna has told you from when we came here. But before we came here, when I was young, I was brought up in the islands by my grandfather and my grandmother. So in the islands, we sleep in a, in a, in a house and we're all on the floor. So in the morning, five o'clock, without fail, my grandfather's up starting prayer. So he'll sing his hymns and he'll start praying. Now, if you're sleeping, and he has a walking stick, so if you're sleeping by the end of the prayer, bang, on the head. <laughs> I told you to wake up. <laughs> so, so it was something that, you know, it, it sounds funny now, but you don't realize the impact that had on my life. I had grandparents that prayed for me constantly. So through their prayers, when we came to Australia, and as you know, we came with only $50, our, our lives have been changed because of these people that prayed prior to us coming here. So I believe that everybody here today is here because of prayer of either a grandmother or a person that, that you've talked to and they've prayed. And that's the power of prayer. You know, some of the stories that, that, that when I sit and, and think about what God has brought us through, you know, like Anna was talking not long ago about one of the, the, the men that was sitting in our house, and he saw, um, I think it was one of the, the Christian channels. He said, I don't like God. I hate him. But then Anna was about to change it. He said, no, no, leave it. Now, that wasn't the miracle for me. The man does not like eating anything except for peanut butter. <laughs> now, in my fridge, and this was going back years ago, the only thing I had in my fridge was half a loaf of bread and peanut butter. <laughs> that was a miracle. Because who would have known that man will come into my house and that's the only thing he eats? You know, there's so much miracles. That I, and all these miracles are because of prayer. You know, I remember when we were running Connect we, and, and when we were in Earlwood. So we would have a cupboard full of plates. We have a fridge full of water. Islanders love water. <laughs> That's like our go-to thing. Yeah, we have no food. Yeah, we have a lot of water. <laughs> and I remember one of the ladies, Esther, would come and, and put her hands on our, our cupboards and, and start praying. And, Lord, fill these cupboards. And, and, you know, at that time, I would think, yeah, let's see what happens. But funny enough, the next day, there'll be a shopping in front of my house in the morning. And this is the thing that people need to understand. When God does answer your prayer, he'll bring that another person to answer your prayer. He'll stir your spirit up and say, listen, this person needs you. That's why sometimes when we're praying, the, the, there's a heaviness of someone's name. You know, someone's, you know, you know maybe um, oh, Bianca is going through something. And funny enough, yes, I do um, register with Bianca sometimes. Sometimes I'm crying, I don't know, I call her and she's going through something. And that's God. He will bring people to you so you can pray for them. So I understand that prayer plays a very important part in our lives. You know, um, growing up, we were, we were growing up with Lorenzo. So Lorenzo's um, Anna's, Anna's brother. So Lorenzo and Nicole, we grew up together. And this is one of the prayers that really blew my mind when, back then. When Nicole, um, they're going to start their family, they're going to have their first kid. And then Nicole said to Anna, it would be really nice if you have another kid. And, and Anna said, no way, I don't want another kid. We already had three by then. <laughs> the funny thing is, Matthew was the only kid that we actually planned. And you can tell he was planned because he's like a giant. So, now the prayer wasn't anything I said or Anna said. Conrad went to Sunday school. And the Sunday school teacher said to Conrad, Okay, Conrad, so what do you want to pray for? And Conrad said, I want to pray for a brother. And surely enough, the brother happened. So, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing what God has done and what God continues to do. You know, this world that we're in today, it's, 
You know, it's very sad. The things that you know, when Pastor Joel was praying today and saying about all these people that are going through hard times. I remember someone saying, there's nothing good about 2020. But I beg to differ. If you're a Christian, there is so much more that you can do in 2020. For you that has a job, pray for someone that doesn't have one. For you that has been blessed with, with food, bless someone. And if you don't want to bless them with food, bless them with your prayers. That's, that's the, the, the relationship that we have with God is so strong that we need to pray so that God can open up his head upon those people. You know, God will bring us to a person that doesn't know who he is. And this is the perfect time within this COVID. I, I, I don't know how, I've been praying so much that I've never prayed like this before in my life in the last two years. I prayed for everyone. I prayed for a connect group. I pray for Pastor Joel. I pray for sometimes for Lebanon. I pray for America. I'm praying all over the place. And I, just like it says in the, in the Bible when God said just to, to, to pray. Let me just see if I can find it. Do not be anxious. This is Philippians 4, 6, 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, and with thank, thanksgiving, present your request to God. And that's how I believe that what we should do as Christians. You know, sometimes we pray for healing and a miracle. And you guys must say, well, you obviously are not healed. But this is what I want to say to you. I am healed. And this is the reason why. I remember when um, Sue Botta pr um, preached about a month ago. And Sue said she had this problem with um, sinuses. And she said, I prayed for it, and it went away straight away. And then she said, but sometimes it comes back. And then I have to keep praying so it will go away. And that's what I believe for me. God needs to heal me here. Because when I was young, food was, you talk to an islander, we love our food. I'm sorry. We just love food. We love food so much, it puts us in the hospital. <laughs> and, and, and I'm praying God will teach me. Te because I believe my healing, it, 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 it's, it's coupled with me understanding what I need to do. Yeah, and, and I have to keep in prayer. I have to ask God, transform me. It's just what it says in the Bible. Be transformed. We have to transform our minds every day regardless of what we face. So today, I encourage you, whatever that the world is going through at the moment, and we can see so many things that are happening. We have people that have lost loved ones. The worst thing is, you can't see them. They're dying alone. You have the, the suicide rate is going up. The crime rate is going up. So what can we do as Christians? Pray and fast. That's our go-to. And you may say, well, I've been praying and nothing's been happening. But let me just say something. You are focusing on your mountain right now. But do you remember when you prayed God for that car and you got it? Do you remember when you prayed God to, to help you through a situation and he did? Do you remember when you prayed for that child that you wanted and you got it? So every time that you're presented with that mountain and you forget, remember what God did for you. And I, I tell you right now, even if this doesn't get healed, it will not stop me. You know, this morning I thought, oh, what's going on? Um, last, last, I think last week, it was my knees. So the knees started to get good and... Then last week, every single joint in my body started hurting. And I thought, oh, okay, that's all right. And then it started to get a bit better. And then this morning, I had the biggest attack, and I said to Adam, I'm getting another attack again. But in my mind, I thought, no, no, this is not an attack. I remember, it's one of the preachers said, shame the devil before he shamed you. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm standing here, I'm shaming him.
Because what else can I do? God has already, Jesus had died on the cross for me. All my pain has been nailed to the cross. And I will stand on there. I will be crawling to this place regardless. And I'll still come here because I need this worship. I need God more than I need air. (laughs) And though I feel pain right now, nothing compares to the pain that Jesus, when he died, he was whipped, he was beaten, he was spat upon, he was, people were saying words at him, and what did he do? He still went to that cross for us. So I encourage you today, Pray for someone. Pray for that next door neighbor. That person that hates you, that person that treats you bad, pray for them. Bless them. And I'm telling you, you'll be amazed at what God can do. See, I always find that if I focus on the now, I I will be disappointed. But if I remember what God did for me, I mean, he gave his life for me before I even knew him. How profound is that? He gave his life, and I had no idea who he was. So I encourage you today. Prayer is one of the most important things that we can do today as, as, as Christians for those that are around us. You know, we can go through life with a lot of disappointments and a lot of anguish and, and hardships, and it reminds me of Job. Now, I wouldn't compare myself to Job because he went through some serious stuff. And then Job's wife said to Job, why don't you curse God and die? And I love what he said. If we accept the good, what about the bad? See, the, the trials that we go through builds us up as Christians. And we're not perfect people. We do fall. We, short, fall, we fall short of God's glory. But with our continual prayer and fasting and, and our, 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 our commitment to Jesus, we will get through what we're going through. So today, I just wanted to encourage you guys. You know, this song that we just sang, Jesus, I need you. I, I need Jesus every day. And, you know, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, the loved one that you have lost, the job that you don't have, I just pray that God will bring that person to you so you can pray for them, that you will be encouraged not on what you see, but what you know and who God is. So that's it, guys. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, if we can get our, our, our guys up. Okay, I'm just going to, oh my gosh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm just going to pray. Thank you, Father. Father God, we are so thankful that you are our Father. There is nothing, Lord, and as you said, there's nothing that can separate us from your love. No mountains, no valleys, nothing that can separate us from your love. So, Lord, we just thank you that you are constantly with us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that continues to guide us. We thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ who gave up his life for us. Father God, I just pray that you stir each and everyone's spirit here today, that they pray for someone that's next to them, Father God, that they encourage someone, Lord, regardless of the circumstances they face, let them be stirred up to pray for one another, Father God, to encourage as you have brought us into this world, Lord, to serve your purpose. So, Father God, we thank you once again. In Jesus' beautiful name we pray. Amen. Why don't we all stand to our feet? You know, let's praise God that he's with us in all of our circumstances. And most importantly, why don't we praise God this morning and we declare that we are
are who He says we are. Not what the world says we are, but what He says we are. Who am I that the highest King would welcome me? I was lost when He brought me in all His love for me. All His love.